Now we're going to have a look at some amazing new snapping functionality. Simply going to move my object like here. I can now hold down the Alt key with my left mouse button, and you can see here we have a temporary pivot. I can just snap it into the place, just like down here, and now pop it like so, never having moved my original center, which is still there. Same thing with this object, like so. I can hold down the Alt key, snap to a midpoint, maybe an edge, or just a vertex like so, and then pop it into place. I'm going to switch to rotation now, so you can see here is the current center of my object. Holding down the Alt key again, I'm going to put it here. Underneath all of these, we have a little button underneath saying lock. I've now locked the center of my object to that temporary pivot point. So when I go into uh, my rotation mode, translation mode, I can now just pop it all into place like so. At any stage, I can reset it by simply reset or toggle the lock off. If my objects are far away, we now have a new option. It's enabled to take the region size and actually not have one specifically defined. That means that wherever I start to click, it's going to jump, in this case, to the nearest point with my mouse. Or indeed my object, like so. Very handy for if objects are, are very, very far away. And back into here, I'll just put it back to a, an average size. So I want to move this into place, but you notice the size is different. In the transform tool options, we now have the possibility to play around with the snap increments, translate, rotate, and now scale. Simply by holding down drag, sorry, control drag, I can snap it up like so, and then translate it into place. But of course, we're not limited to the pivot point being defined by the boundaries of the object. Holding down the Alt key again, say if I were to go directly inside here, I can lock it, as we've seen before. I could also middle click, and now I'm defining an area outside of my object. So if I were to go in here, and I want to here rotate from a pivot point outside of my object. Because all the snapping works in all modes, like all the tools, I can now say select a component. In this case, I'm going to just grab my polygons here, hold down the Alt key for, say, rotation. I'm going to pop that in there. You can also notice the center icons have changed. It just makes it a lot easier to clarify the centers as opposed to the transform tools. Now with my pivot point defined, I can, again, rotate not only multiple objects, but I'm doing it along an edge. This means I don't always have to keep picking reference modes for points, edges, objects, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to pop it back like so. If I switch to the top view, I'll show you something new. Inside the visibility options, we can now split the cell size of the floor and grid to the snap size. So if I were to move a point like so, you can now notice they are different. There is some additional functionality for edges. If I were to go here and take off grid snapping and go to segments, now when I move this edge it will snap to other edges. A little additional functionality there. We also have now a control over collapsing points when snapping. A whole host of new tools, controls, amazing workflow, all for version 3.5.